Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Da 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 Here to describe the pure Zepp antenna, the original so-called Zeppelin or Zepp antenna. Where does that name come from? It comes from the fact that this exact sort of antenna used to be hung from Zeppelins in order to obtain radio communication without a decent ground because uh, you don't really get a decent ground uh, 5,000 feet above the surface of the earth except for the metal frame of the dirigible or ZEP uh, that you happen to be riding in. But of course we all know what became of the ZEP. Uh, they, they are making somewhat of a comeback but uh, these antennas are used in various forms by amateur radio operators. But here's the original pure form. The radiating element of the antenna is a half a wavelength long at the frequency of interest. Now a viewer has asked me about uh, a ZEP antenna for 7.040 megahertz. 7.040 040 megahertz. So the length of this antenna in a case like that would be four hundred and sixty seven divided by seven point zero four zero equals about 66 feet 4 inches, 66 and one-third feet. So uh, that's the way that we would deal with that. Now how on earth do I get rid of this full screen calculator? I didn't want the calculator to be full screen. Well, let's Okay, well, we're back to our back to our action here. The pure zep, 66 feet 4 inches. Now that is subject to a little bit of variation in a zep antenna because we're dealing with uh, an antenna that's not quite the same thing as a dipole and it's liable to be a little longer. So you're going to have to determine the exact length by experiment. Another thing that you're not really going to know is the impedance at the point where the feed line joins the antenna. At the end of a wire antenna, you have a pure resistance and it's very high, but you don't know exactly what. Let's just suppose, though, that uh, for argumentative purposes, porpoises, that it happens to be 4,500 ohms. Now, if you use very good solid wire and you string this up in free space without anything near the ends, then you're probably going to get an impedance or a purely resistive impedance of something like that. Now, you run a quarter of a wavelength wire parallel to this part of the antenna, in, a set, in effect getting a ladder line or open wire line here that is a quarter of a wavelength long. The length will vary, but the person who suggested this video says he wants 450 ohm ladder line which probably has a velocity factor of just about 95% or the same as the uh, antenna itself. So you're probably going to see something on the order of 234 uh, divided by the frequency in megahertz. In this case, it'd be 234 divided by 4.070 
or half of the 66 feet 4 inches and I'm not going to use that calculator. Oh, what the heck. It looks good, don't it? 234 divided by 7.04 equals about 33 feet, maybe 5 inches. Okay, so maybe 33 feet 5 inches for this. Maybe about 66 and 1 half feet for this. Now you're going to have to determine these things by experiment to get them exact. But let's say that you have inherent um, sixth sense and you know by extrasensory perception precisely what these lengths are going to be and you cut them to that uh, those numbers you'll get say 33 feet 5 inches for this part the length of ladder line and 66 feet 6 inches let's say for the antenna and they're all in a straight line they need to be in a straight line the impedance that you're going to get here is again going to be a pure resistance and it's going to be something on the order of the transmitter wants to see 50 ohms that's what R sub T stands for but in this case what you're going to see is 45 ohms the way that works the impedance of the ladder line, 450 ohms, is a tenth of this uh, purely resistive impedance. So this purely resistive impedance is in, in turn a tenth of the impedance of the ladder line, or 45 ohms. I've gone over this in other videos, but the impedance uh, or the uh, yeah the characteristic impedance of the transmission line is going to be the geometric mean of the impedances at either end also both purely resistive if this thing is precisely a quarter of a wavelength long that's called a quarter wave matching section whose characteristic impedance is the geometric mean of the impedances at either end and by that the basic formula would be the transmitter resistance well no the resistance of the feed line here which I call a feed line, a 450 ohm ladder line, quarter wave matching section is going to be equal to the square root of the product of RT and RF. Uh, so not RF, RA. I'm a little absent minded here today but hopefully you're able to follow along with this old Coot, who's kind of tired and kind of uh, benzodiazepined a little bit. But that's not going to change for a while, so you're just going to have to put up with it. I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully you'll get the idea, though, there, that this is the design for this frequency, which is the frequency of interest and the frequency for which the crystals are cut for this fellow's little one half watt QRP radio. Let's see what for hear it for QRP one half watt. That's not much power, is it? This antenna had better be up in the clear and it had better be up pretty high. So these uh, formulas are probably gonna be pretty close. In any case these would be the dimensions. <clears throat> then you can just connect these wires to the radio. The uh, shield part of the coaxial PL259 would go to the quarter wave wire here and the 
center conductor part of the PL259 to the three-quarter wavelength wire here. One-quarter wavelength plus one-half wavelength. 450 ohms impedance for the ladder line. Characteristic impedance. So that's that. That's the basic uh, particulars of this pure ZEP antenna design. Uh, as for general advice, uh, the viewer has told me nothing about his available space, whether he can keep this all straight or not for this length, which is pretty close to a hundred feet, and whether or not he has the way, a way to get it up high enough. Uh, and then, of course, if you're going to do that, your radio is going to have to be in the top of a tree or something. Oh, well, nothing's perfect. But th those are my general ideas about this. But as for ideas about how to set up a ZEP antenna, once again, my uh, method is try it and see. Personally, I'd recommend a plain old half-wave dipole antenna uh, fed with 50 ohm coaxial cable. That's what I would recommend not this ZEP antenna. If you want to use this, it's fancy and it's kind of sexy for those of you who like mathematics, but it's not very practical in my opinion. And that's the opinion of amateur radio station W1GV. Da da da, da 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 da, da da da, da 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 saying 73, which means best regards, and so long. Well, I erased that, but I can still write 73, and I can also write the symbol for best regards, which is really da-da-da-da-da-da.